walking spot. Well, the whole place is really a whole complex. It's amazing, Lakes. First 40. First 40. What a fish. Well, that's a new PB coming. Get in. Nice in case you didn't realise, we're in the middle of a storm. What an epic trip. Finished off with another lovely fish. Belly pool. This is us. This is the one. Lovely looking place. Wow. It's a lovely looking spot. Yes. Well, the whole place is really a whole complex. It's amazing. It's awesome, isn't it? It's completely out of the way. Where do you start? Everywhere is a spot. Ev everywhere. <laughs> Beautiful, though. It looks really nice just under that tree, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And straight across there as well. And there, and there, and there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's carpy. Looks amazing. <laughs> All of it's carpy, Joe. All of it. You've got the heron going over. We've always seen kingfishers, herons, all sorts of birds. It's, it's just it's full of beautiful. nature. Frogs, they're yeah. going to keep us up. Yeah, there's a lot of frogs. I guess with this being such an intimate little water, that's probably one of the shortest walk arounds ever. It is. It all just looks incredible. There's Thousands of opportunities. <laughs> I've only got three days to find at least one each. Yeah. Where are we going then? I guess we're going to have to flip for it, aren't we? Sounds good. Go on then. Right. I haven't got a coin, but I have got a trusty lens cap. Fine. Sony side up. Got the left side. Yep. Sony side down. The right side. Sounds I'll go good first. To me. Okay. Guess I'm in this side then. Yes, you are. I'll take that. All right. Let's get set up. Set up and have a beer. Yeah. Now for a cider drinker, I am very much enjoying this Upola. Yeah. But I want to know how to make a lager. They do indeed. And apparently, it makes you see clearer, which is... Uh, I feel like we may need that. We may need it indeed. <laughs> it's such a small venue with so many opportunities, you feel like yeah. you could be here for weeks and, and struggle to find the perfect spot. So yeah. I think it's just a case of putting rods on likely spots. And Well, there's, there's so many people. likely spots. Um, there's so many little gaps within the lily pads that, and all of them look really good. Exactly. So. And now we've, we've split the lake in half, so we've got our areas, mm -hmm. I guess we can fine tune it a bit more. And uh, having a look around, is, it's just kind of finding places where I think the fish are going to want to be. I'm yeah. sure it's the same in yours, so I mean, I'm going to have yeah. a single rod just there. There's a little channel going between the lilies, which mm -hmm. it just looks a bit unnatural with the fact that there's a pad, pad bed there, but there's a little gap in the middle, I think. Yeah, it, Maybe it looks a, a definite patrol route, patrol route rods it? going there, and then Again, around in the main bit of the swim, one just off some lilies, and there's a lovely, lovely looking uh, snag. There's like a snag, a little gap about this big, mm -hmm. and then a lily bed. I think if I get a rig in there. Yeah. Um, but also, because it's such a small venue, I don't want to be fishing to far banks because that's just going to cut my swim off for, yeah. for fish that are going to be aware of line. They mm -hmm. come around here, there's line, bowstring tight across. It's yeah, gonna they're going to speak off. So off I'm going to fish fairly close in and hope that that gives them the freedom to roam mm -hmm. around. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. there's there's not lots of fish in here either, are there? So it's it's about an acre in size, and there's 25 fish in here. Yeah. So it's it's not bad. It's not mm -hmm. bad odds, especially when they're quite a decent size Go as well. To over 40 pound, I will, I will take any bite yeah. out of this session. Yeah, exactly. We're here for three nights, but uh, you've also had a bit of uh, knowledge from the owner. I have. Yeah. One of your spots. Yeah, there's a little spot just in front of us, and it's been known to do the big one a few times. So it's it's well worth uh, well worth persevering yeah. with that spot, I think, and. We've actually had a bait package as well, supplied from the owner himself. Now this is what they're reared on, so this is something is. they're used to. Yeah. This is something you can pick up if, when you get here, you want to use some of the stuff they're reared on, they're used to, probably less wary of than you can get. You can bring your own bait of course, but local knowledge is always something to go by and if you know that they feed on this stuff, then it's stupid not to go for it. I think he said there's about 16 ingredients in 
something in the like mix. That. So lots, nutrition, lots of uh, something yeah. that they enjoy, and uh, and you're part of the lake as well. You can see it's full of natural, so it's oh, got to be yeah. something very enticing for them to yeah. choose our hook baits over anything else. Yeah, definitely. There's a couple, um, couple of nice spots that I found as well. There's a really nice overhanging tree which mm -hmm. probably comes out about ten foot, so that they've got to be getting amongst that. And then there's a nice, nice clear line through to kind of the far bank, which yeah. uh, again it just looks looks perfect. It looks like they've been patrolling up and down it. Definitely. So it's well well worth trying a few few little spots like that. I think. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm itching to get the rods out already. Yeah, We've yeah, only been too. here about an hour, so let's get cracking. Let's do it. Wow, um, 15 minutes this rob was in the water. Thoroughly expecting this to be a, a long waiting game. It could still be from now on, but um, the first rod I lowered into position, which looked like a little channel through the lilies. Just a single Ronnie rig, nothing around it. And within, I think, 20 minutes, one of the most violent takes I've ever received. It uh, pulled the rod almost off the rest, picked up into it, and the alarm kept ringing for a good five to 10 seconds more. The reel was, uh, the alarm was running that fast. Beautiful little fish. By no means the biggest in here, probably uh, a quarter of the size, but um, I'm very, very happy to get off the mark. And a beautiful fish it is too. What a scrap, what a fish, and what an amazing place. Roll on the next few days. So before I even managed to get some bait out for my third rod, the first one, which is uh, on the supposed big fish spot, tore off. And what a lovely fish it is. Again, it's not the biggest in the lake, but still over 22 pounds. Can't ask for much more after a couple of hours. Crazy. Such an amazing looking fish. Just turned up at Mimp Hole, spent the first 20 minutes stalking and noticed some feeding bu bubbles in the corner. So cast out and while I was setting up the tent within 15 minutes, it went roaring off with this 29.8. It's my first time abroad, so very, very happy with this beautiful mirror. It's a lovely looking fish. Just as the guys finished taking the picture of the last one, and they were almost back to their swim, and the same rod went screaming off with this fighter. He went straight into the reeds, so it was a bit of a battle, but he's a beautiful ghosty. 13-4, a really interesting face. So we're fishing down here at Carp Carpinsula. Uh, I'm joined with Angler Alice on Mint Pool, and this is my first fish of the day, 23 pound mirror. Um, Alice has had two already, up to 29 and a half pounds, so she's beating me at the moment. Um, but hopefully I'll get a couple more. Ready? Yep. Okay. Stop. You're not going to believe this. Has it done it? It's done it. It's 40 pound, 40 pound, 14 ounces. <laughs> yes. Well done, mate. First 40. Fish. First 40. What a fish. That is one of the few morning. things that's going to wake me up this morning. <laughs> the sound of coffee. a boiling kettle and a clinking mug will get you up. Yeah, perfect. I need a bit milky, I'm afraid. No, that's so. fine. It's wet and warm, isn't it? Perfect. 
it's got to be an innuendo in there somewhere. But it's too, it's too <laughs> early and I'm too sleep deprived yeah. to say anything. What was it, two or three hours sleep at most? Something like that. Frogs were keeping us up. Yep. I've never heard anything like that before in my life. No, no. Thousands of frogs. But uh, luckily in amongst it, there were some screaming delkins and screaming sirens. There was so, indeed, um, yeah. That kept us uh, awake as well. Mm, yep. So three fish between us. Seen. What's now? Five fish out of a lake that only has 25 fish. Yeah. In the first night. I We've think that's pretty here, good going. Been here under 24 hours. Not bad at all. Start with the smallest one. The 29. Hmm. Yeah, get the little scamp out of the way, and then we'll uh, move on to the bigger ones. Move on to its parents. <laughs> so here we go. This this is the smallest from last night. Immaculate 29 pound common. What a beautiful fish. Absolutely full of spawn. Awesome looking fish. Let's get this one back to the water. Do a few returning shots. And then let's go and have a look at Joe's. Well here we go. This one actually went off between Luke's two fish. And as you saw a lovely um, 29 comedy just had. And we're about to get out a proper gem that he's had as well. But uh, I had to get in on the act as well. Lovely 33 pound, two ounce mirror off of a margin spot that I liked the look of yesterday. Gave me a right old uh, merry dance in the fight. Went round the uh, bay, into the back of a tree. Somehow, miraculously, I got it in. Absolutely mega fish. Put up a hell of a scrap in here, they do. And uh, just blown away. The fish in here are just stunning. Thank you, Carpinsula. Thank you, Belly Pool. Thank you, Belgium. Definitely need to be coming back. <laughs> That's how you splash. And here she is, the biggest of last night. And actually my biggest ever, ever fish, ever carp. 40 pound and 14 ounces. First ever 40. <sighs> what a place carp insular is. And belly pool. It's an honor for, to fish such a place. Awesome carp, awesome surroundings. Carp fishing don't get much better than this. Incredible. Just showing the other side, just before we slip her back. And it's just an enormous fish. It's gonna make a lot of anglers very happy in the future, I can tell. The fish in here have just been going from strength to strength over the last few years. And it's just gonna carry on that way. So this explains everything that the carp specialist is about. Moments like these, big carp in amazing locations. Does it get much better? Let's get her back. Yes! Come on! The morning seems to have absolutely flown by, I don't know about you, oh, but um, whether it's the lack of sleep or just the, the busyness of filming all the fish and getting everything shot. But um, it's been awesome. And we've just had Yeller in the swim, talking about the fish that we've had, talking about spots. There's a few spots we're gonna change to, at least I am, but there's one to my right mm -hmm. and one just behind the camera is a hard spot, which I'm gonna try later on, put a bit more bait out, because it'd be stupid not to take local knowledge. And I think you've got another spot to try. Yeah, yeah, my left-hand spot, um, just a little bit further down the margin. Apparently it's a nice, nice hard spot. So again, like you say, local knowledge is key. And these guys seem to know the lakes inside out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we seem to have done well with the initial hit. I think we've sort of caught some of the carp off where, uh, off guard sort of thing. Cause it hasn't been fished for the last week, I don't think. So a bit of bait, they probably weren't expecting it and we've hit them pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we've had five fish out of 25 on the first 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty good going. Yeah. And uh, even they were saying that people can book here for a week, weekend and uh, We've already exceeded that, so we'll take we'll take that. Take right. yeah. There's still more fish to come, of course. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah. But uh, the fish that we have caught, we've just found out a bit more about as well. Let's start with your your big one, yeah, of so, course. So my big one is actually the biggest in the lake. Um, it's known as Lucian, and yeah, it's it's actually it's just spawned. So it. A couple of weeks ago, it would have been quite a bit bigger. Yeah, so um, you could class that as unlucky, but your first ever 40, the biggest in the lake. I, I don't think a 40 is ever going to no. be unlucky. No, definitely not. So uh, I think it was out at about 46 pounds last mm -hmm. time. Only and, a month uh, ago. Only a month ago, yeah, it was caught a month ago. Um, but it's only actually been caught three times in the last three years. 
something like that, yeah. So, yeah, quite quite honoured to catch that. My, and, uh, my 33 was yeah. one known as the barrel. The bucket. Bucket, I got that wrong again. Yeah. The bucket. And um, it's actually the biggest weight that one's ever been out at as well. So that one was carrying spawn, yours wasn't. Your yep. common was carrying spawn. So some of the fish seem to have spawned, some of them haven't. Which I think that's kind of worked in our favour because yeah. it seems the ones that have spawned seem to be on the munch. And the ones that haven't spawned are also on the munch yeah. and ready to spawn. Definitely. So weights are fluctuating on how they've been out previously, but any fish is a, is a great bonus. And to be fishing here is just insane anyway. It's yeah. a beautiful place. There was also that 22 pound that 22, I had. That's probably the most special one of them yeah, all, really. Apparently it's quite a rare fish and it's only done two captures, including myself, in the last eight years. So quite honoured to see that yeah, really. So and it, it was a, I don't know what is. It was a beautiful but fish. Uh, so We went through his phone gallery. We've seen a few other fish, which we've got our eye on. And if we can get any of them, I'm sure either of us would be absolutely overjoyed. Already are, but any more fish would just be a bonus. But as I said, Sun is now high in the sky, bite time seems to have been and gone, so rods in, bait out, and then we're going to have a wander, see how everyone else is getting on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. See what the rest of the venue has to offer. We've just got back from our walk around the whole complex, been gone for probably a good four or five hours actually. So the lake is well and truly rested. We put in a fair bit of bait before we left on all of our spots that we're gonna be fishing and the rods are now back out. I'll talk about a few little tips and tricks that I've been doing this session that may or may not have been helping me get the bikes, but certainly not gonna harm. But uh, we started off by walking to Mint Pool where Alice and Ben are fishing and they had a couple of fish yesterday. Also had a, a mid 30 pound grass carp last night. And while we were around there filming, I saw this little uh, Koi swimming around, rather lethargic. I thought, I'll have him. They said that they were uh, struggling to get anything to entice it to take anything, but I thought, give me a rod, give me five minutes, and I did manage to winkle it out on a three line hook with a couple of little uh, mealworms on. So, lovely little fish went back, and uh, it was nice to see him. Um, something a bit different so there is variety in these lakes and that's mainly the key thing and you move on to origin pool which is where mark's fishing with a couple of his friends a bit trickier got sort of smaller holes and pockets in the weed where you've got to find your spots maybe boat them out or be extremely accurate and just got to be on your rod and uh, ready for when that choice opportune moment comes up where a, a fish comes across your spot and takes your bait so very different to this one whereas this is more lily pads and sort of low-lying silt not too silty but finding spots which are slightly nicer that is well and truly more of a weedy lake with little patches and then moving on to king pool which is just behind us which is predominantly the catfish pool there are some more carp in there as well but there's a couple of guys on there fishing for the catfish and as we're walking around one of them had another one. I know that Luke went and filmed one the other night, which was uh, quite a bit bigger than that one. But uh, as I say, we're now back in our swim and I've got my rods back out. And a few little things I've done on this session, which I feel may have given me a bit of an advantage and Luke adopted them as well, just to make things as unconspicuous as possible. Because this is such a small and intimate water, which probably sees quite a lot of angling pressure, I didn't want to rouse the suspicions too much that we're actually here. So we didn't want to use um, sonars or anything or lead about too much. Just like the look of spots and put the rods out. And a few other small little things I've done is firstly, my bank sticks are much further back than I would normally have them on a lake. Normally people set their rods up at the front, because this is so small and I'm picturing the, the fish patrol these margins quite a lot, rods right back so it's not casting any kind of shadow over the lake. The same on all of our rods, so the tip of my rod isn't even off the end of the bank. Plenty of line space, it's not going to touch the bank or anything, but if any fish is swimming past, it's not going to see a silhouette of a rod and think there's something up. Next, I'm using completely slack, well not slack lines, but getting as much more line on the bottom as possible. This one is fishing to a far snag over there. And uh, once I put the rod in, quickly put the back lead on and managed to whiz a back lead over to the other side of the lilies. So now I know that my line from the other side of the lilies to the snag is on the bottom and then the rest of my line is actually running across the top of the lily. So there's no line in the margin and the line on the other side of the pads is all on the bottom. The other rods, back lids in the margin, straight out to the spot. So as little line in the water as possible, as completely out of the way so fish aren't going to come in contact with it. And lastly, because I'm fishing snags and things, I'm lock fishing locked up tight. And because I don't want my rods to be flying off, which they almost did yesterday, I've put in some pegs on the reel. Stop it from going anywhere, just turn that off. Pull it tight, that's not going anywhere. It's stuck on the pegs, but when I come along, I can pick that straight up. So I'm not gonna lose anything, I'm not gonna give the fish much room at all to get into any of the snags, fishing safely, effectively, and hopefully, coming into the second night, something else will slip up. So I've just got my other two rods out, and before I get my third out, I thought we'd have a quick look at the setup that I've been using. Now, 
Firstly, you're going to notice that I'm using stone rather than a lead. This is because there's actually a lead ban on this water. A pack of 12 of these stones are provided when you first arrive, and if you need to buy any more, you can buy them on a stone by stone basis. They have swivels embedded within the stone, and they work exactly the same way as a lead would do. So you can use them on safety drop-offs exactly how you normally would. The rig I've been using, well, I've been using a helicopter setup for a starter, and then just a simple blowback rig. This is my margin spot I've been using with just a couple of tiger nuts, which I've baited quite heavily over with a natural particle mix. And this has been doing the fish. Nice and simple, but still very effective. So we've just came into the second morning and at first light I got woken up by this amazing looking creature. Definitely not the biggest in here, but when they look like this, does it really matter? It was caught from literally two metres behind me and it seems to be all the margins are really paying off here. What a lovely looking fish and a few years time it's going to be a belter. This was one of five between us last night. The first one was a little tiddler, so we slipped him back, but we slinged three. This was the biggest at 27.4. So it's a lovely, chunky mirror. It's a beautiful fish. It's our second night at Carpinchula. Our double brace from in the night, so two mirrors. We also got a grass carp and two tiddlers as well. So, successful night. So Alice and I are coming to the end of our first international fishing trip here in Belgium at Carpinsula. Uh, we've been fishing the mint pool and we've had some good fish, haven't we? We've had some beautiful fish. I think we're just trying to count how many we've had in total. I think we've had 11 with 10 being carp. So two grass carp and some beautiful, beautiful fish. Just wanted to say thank you to Yella for creating such an amazing place. There's so many sneaky spots, ideal for stalking and finding those like little bits, there's carpy special spots. And thank you to Mark from the Carp Specialist as well for organising all of this. Well Mark, we're coming into our final night here. It's uh, gonna be our third night. It's been very productive first couple of nights, so hopefully something else happens tonight. Well, something happened for you actually as well. Yeah, it's yeah. been a bit tougher Ooh. on your pool, but Tell us a bit more about the place, it's, it's stunning, but uh, I think you've got a bit more info than what we've given so far. Yeah, yeah, we're at Carpinsla, it's, uh, it's in Belgium, um, it's just two and a half hours from, from Calais, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a place hidden in nature. It's an abandoned uh, natural reserve from back in the days. Jelle, the owner, uh, had worked for over a decade to prepare this. He, every fish uh, that's in here, he knows it from he knows it from this size, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, it's just his his big little project. Because yeah. I say I say little because we are we having up here uh, five small lakes. Mm -hmm. um, they're all about one acre. Four are open. Four are open for fishing at the moment. We have two specimen lakes. You guys are on belly, mm -hmm. doing a belly pool, doing a really good job. I'm on the original pool bit hard for me I think I had to get a revenge but uh, maybe tonight ne next to that we have uh, an action lake called mint pool mm -hmm. uh, that Alice is fishing at the moment and we have the king pool with the big catfish with five catfish over over two meters yeah. and 40 40 in total mm -hmm. and 15 of them are the albino ones so yeah. it's, it's it's such an amazing place you've seen a few of them so far in there Catfish aren't for everyone. Can't say they're for me, but for some <laughs> anglers, they, they want to go for them. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you like to go for because it's so so close to to Calais, you can mm. just go here for a midweek or a weekend as well, or a full week if you like to yeah. to go out there and definitely uh, want to spend some more time. As I said, you're it's hidden in nature. Every lake you have all the privacy you need, and um, yeah, that's all. Also, always was uh, one of the main things when Yellow started this. Yes. 
uh, it was bringing carp fishing and uh, and nature together mm -hmm. with leaving the, the smallest uh, footprint yeah. as uh, as possible so um, yeah that's also the, the toilets are are eco mm -hmm. um, you you have a you you don't have electricity on at your swims but yeah if you hear the surroundings yeah well it's testament to what he's done there the place is absolutely beautiful um completely different to anywhere back home i've never been somewhere this remote and I mean, you probably see the the mosquito boats on the arm thing that's all part of it and the, the noisy frogs at the moment as well but it is uh, you're so away from the rush of life when you're here it's a beautiful place it's a really uh, really beautiful place to uh spend a couple of days definitely and i uh, think the barbecue might be just about to get lit i think so i can almost taste the beer so uh, <laughs> we'll call it quits there and go get some food let's go for it so look at this the last day at the origin pool we we tried everything we could uh we actually were getting a bit worried but in the end mitch just caught this beautiful beautiful stunning mirror what a way to finish your trip. It's 26.7 and wow. Hopefully for the last night we're gonna catch another one, but this is already a really good start. Let's we're, hope, we will see. Get it back. Nice. Need a new stick. 12. Yeah? 31 12. That's the new PB coming. <laughs> get in. Nice one. This storm is right on top of us now, yep. so uh, let's get this done. <laughs> In case you didn't realise, we're in the middle of a storm. This rain seems to be getting a bit heavier. So, I coax her back. There you go. Just shy of 32 pounds of Belgian common. What a brute. Back to a little home. Cheers, Joe. What a trip. What a trip. <laughs> well, there we go. Coming into the final evening, we've just had the barbecue come back. It's starting to get dark, as you probably hear the frogs have woken up, and so did my left rod. I've been watching the other two rods getting liner after liner, I think one of them's gonna go off. And then this one, which was on a fresh spot last night, it's been out there for probably going at 40 hours, just not touched it. I knew it was looking good out there. And it's gone off at 29.4. Not quite another 30, but this is my third fish out of uh, belly pool. Been a bit slow since my first two fish, and I made up with that. Up early in the morning, packing down, driving to uh, Calais and back to England. So to finish on this, I'm more than happy. Thank you once again, Belgium. You've been great for an epic trip. Finished off with another lovely fish. Back in England. Now a sofa, that's a different kind of city to sit in a car, isn't it? It is very nice. Yeah, very Got some comfy. food. The morning kind of got away from us. It was a pretty busy one. Mm. Run out of time, I think, with 10 minutes spare for the Eurotunnel. I think so, yeah. We're up at about just gone six, packing up. And that was tough. That was hard going, getting up that early. Especially but, when uh, you know it's bike time as well. Exactly. It looked spot on with bikes yeah, this morning. Really the weather was perfect. The, the spots looked good. I was getting liners. It's, just, yeah. it's painful to bring the rods back in. Yeah. But uh, I think we both in 100% agreement that that place is absolutely incredible. Yeah, oh, we had, yeah, we had an amazing time there. Was it eight fish in the end? and. Eight fish. Average uh, is way over first. The biggest at Lucian. Lucian at 40 pounds. The one I had ounces. last night actually was a named fish as well. Uh, peach and pepper it was called. Yeah. At 29.4. So, uh, and that was a, a, another good weight as well. So we've done really well and also caught fish mm. at good weights. So uh, definitely need to go back. At least oh, try some of the other lakes as well. There's, yeah, well. there's so much to, to go for there. And yeah, I can't yeah. wait to go back really. Yeah, and a awesome huge place. thank you to uh, Yella for having us there at Carpentier. Yeah, thank you very much. Please do go and follow them on Instagram and check them out and, mm. and book yourself up there because it's an amazing place. Yeah. And of course, to Mark as well. Mark at the Carp Specialist, yeah. He's a brilliant host, brilliant arranging everything. So yeah, we just had a really good time. Definitely. A really good time. Now I'm, uh, I can smell my KFC. I'm mm -hmm. done talking. 
we're done talking. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, but yeah, definitely go and check out Carpenter. Awesome location.